Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniature. Today I wanted to take a moment to talk about some of the recent models I've been printing from Rocket Pig Games. Now, I've printed a few of their models up in resin on my printer, and sometimes I'm really happy with the results, and sometimes not so much. But one thing is for sure is I've really enjoyed just the sheer variety of stuff that they have continued to put out. Um, a lot of it has been through Patreon, they've had quite a few successful Kickstarters as well, and while I may not support and back each and every one of those endeavors, um, I have absolutely partaken of quite a few of their sales and gotten to cherry pick a lot of the models that I've enjoyed from those campaigns and their Patreon. There's a lot of neat stuff there, and if you've never checked it out, they have got a massive, massive backlog or back catalog as well, of interesting and unique looking designs. So without further ado, I thought I would grab a couple of my painted guys here as examples, and I went ahead and tried printing up more human-sized stuff this time. I figured, you know, they've got some neat things, and I'd really like to go check them out. So we have our Warhammer Witch Hunter Inquisitor guy right here to keep our Hoplite Warrior company. Now, funny thing is, he is on a very small base compared to a lot of these other guys. So, why don't we start grabbing some. Some of the models, like this weird brain, tentacle, mind flare type thing in a JoJo pose. I don't know what it is, but it looks neat. It's got one of those smaller bases. Um, one of their goblins from their recent Tusklands. Kickstarter. I'd take this guy. And they are printed at 100%. I must add that the rope golem is not. So something to bear in mind. And obviously one of the joys of 3D printing, and especially with Rocket Pig stuff, they're all supportless models, so it's not like you can't just go tweak it and fiddle with it and put it to your, you know, desired size. Moving on, actually speaking of Tusklands, we went ahead and printed up a few of their actual orcs that were from that campaign. The orc gladiator. Now, for whatever reason, I put them too close to the print bed, I think. I don't know, I'm not sure, and it just came out kind of flat right there, unfortunately. Everything else came out all right. Now, that's about the right size I would expect an orc to be. Um, here's another one I want to say. This is like the weapon master or something. I'm not 100%, but I dig those big, thick proportions. Easy to grab, easy to handle, easy to paint, easy to get a good eye on things. I think this is the ironclad, as he is clad in iron. <laughs> so yeah, they're nice, thick, big pieces. And somewhat adjacent to them is a Tusklands Hobgoblin with very sharp spikes jutting out of him. Again, if we use our human models. I mean, that's about the expected size, I think. Honestly, I feel like he's kind of on the shorter end of things. Uh, I did print some of their more recent human models, such as this Winter Knight. I think he came out quite nice. Obviously, this isn't a resin. Didn't bother to do much else. It's a little less shiny. I've been trying to do a better job of cleaning things. You can see he, whoa. He was also printed at just regular 100%. He is a little bit taller. I'll cast him as an outlier, I guess. Maybe I should go back and try printing another one. Oh, what was this? Like a Void Stalker or Shadow Stalker or something? Again, just some fun, interesting models. The Clockwork Engineer. They had them available with or without the big giant clockwork arms. Actually, he's a regular human. He's probably a good baseline height scale with our void shade something stalker here being a little bit bigger. And let's get into the weirder stuff. <clears throat> I believe this was called an ether haunt. It's a little bit shiny. 
insect-like. A bit taller than an average human. And then we get into more of my kind of thing. This is, I believe it was called a Zill drone. Much more insect-like, but with plenty of weapons and arms. I like you can really see the armor links. It's getting kind of crowded here. There we go. We only have one model left anyways, but we figure this one was kind of the coolest one. And again, I was really just trying to shoot for more human-sized stuff just to see what it was like. I hadn't really tried printing much in that scale. But this was the Conjoined Twins Necromancer. Because that needs to be a thing that we see more often on the table. And it looks like they're both supposed to be blindfolded. Because why not, right? I'm like, you want a new Frostgrave mage? There you go. With a Frostgrave model for comparison. So, some fun stuff. <clears throat> I will go grab some primer, we'll get everybody blasted here, and we will see just how everything turns out. So, sit tight, and hopefully we'll really let those details show through. Okay, we got everybody primed in uh, no particular order here, I'm just grabbing the first thing. So here we have our Clockwork Master, I think getting them primed definitely helps a little bit there. Nice filigree and ornamentation on his clockwork arms. You can see the details on his face. Turned out pretty decent. With a few other models, WizKids and GW there, along with a frost grave, just to give you a good idea of what to expect if you print them at a standard size. Here we have the Winter Knight. I am quite pleased with how he turned out. Details really came through there. And again, makes me kind of sad seeing our hoplite outclassed size-wise by everybody else. Poor guy. Goblin Shaman. Honestly, he's probably my favorite of the bunch. I think if you shrunk him down, he'd actually be pretty... Not even that much. Maybe he'd shrink him down 5-10%. He'd actually probably fit in with some of the GW guys. The Brain Flare which I am still unsure as to what it is, but it looks neat and it doesn't have a face. It's just all twisty tentacles and limbs. Or ether hunt. I, I really don't know what's up with this thing. It's neat though. <laughs> it's a bit on the taller side. Our Tusklin's Hobgoblin with incredibly pointy spikes. He's a big dude. Our Shade Stalker. I think if you're going to use him as an actual human, you are going to want to shrink him down. He's really tall. Then again, if you wanted to use him as some kind of otherworldly, you know, outer planes messenger or something like that, yeah, it works too. Our Zill Drone. I look at this and I think Sahagan, and I don't know why. He's also pretty tall there. Our conjoined necromage. And summon an undead Mothra, maybe. That might be kind of fun. Might want to shrink him down a little bit if you wanted to go that route. And then our orcs that we had earlier. Here is the gladiator. I obviously didn't prime the back of him. Okay. The... Ironclad. And finally, I believe this was the Berserker. I'll have to double check. I'm pretty sure that's what he was. So, you know, he's pretty thick too. I gotta say, uh, just in terms of variety, yeah, there's a bit of sameness. Um, there's definitely some repeated styles, but that's almost part of, I think, Rocket Pig's signature look to their figures. Uh, but overall, I mean, you know, considering the size of their catalog at this point, I mean, I'll forgive some sameness. And just the sheer variety of stuff that's available, 
Um, they have absolutely plundered the depths of many tomes of beasts and monsters uh, and popular culture digging up some of these monstrosities. So definitely a lot of fun to be had there. If you've never checked out their stuff, uh, do take a look. There's a lot there. Um, if you're not into doing all the crazy delicate supports, you know, all this stuff will print supportless. You don't need to worry about it. Just make sure the trick is to have a nice, sharp, and flat razor blade. I found that is the easiest way to get things off the print bed. I don't even bother with the scooper thingy that, you know, they used to include with them. Do they still do that? Obviously, honestly, razor's the way to go. So anyway, we'll put a link down below to their Patreon page. Um, from there, you can check out all their various resources and see what kinds of new and funky monsters they've got coming. And hopefully, something there will strike your fancy. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye bye.